Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless 8, and this is the end of the day report for August 12, 2014. First of all, my sincerest apologies on the delayed end of the night, end of the day report for tonight. I had um, a few um, family engagements that I had to attend, and uh, obviously got delayed for that matter. However, getting straight down to business, let me start off by saying that today's market action, from what I saw so far, um, and based on my um, own analysis and market uh, chart reading was a simply a consolidative consolidative um, digestive action by the market after um, the big powerful gains uh, that we saw in the market since the reversal on Friday we can uh, this is the, the this is uh, the this is standard procedure I talked about it previously where the where the pullbacks would be and I believe that give or take a couple of points, that's exactly where the pullbacks happen. Uh, on the S&P 500, on the Dow, on the NASDAQ, on the Russell 2000 and such. I did not see any panic breakdowns in any particular front. Obviously individual stocks did what they needed to do. Um, and certain sectors of the market, areas of the market were extremely strong. So looking at uh, putting that in, in, in a visual format let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average right here keep in mind that we have a very fluid uh, situation on the global um, uh, political front and any at any given moment any particular piece of news coming out of the Ukraine-Russia conflict the Gaza-Palestinian conflict the situation in um, I'm actually even losing track of all the all the wars that are being fought around the world. Uh, the Iraqi situation. Let me not forget about that. The political maneuvers that's going on there in uh, in removing um, the current premier, Al Maliki, and uh, and replacing him with I can't really pronounce the new gentleman's name. My apologies. Um, and um, the bottom line is the political game theory machinations are in full blast. Despite all that our markets are taking a stand because global money generally tends to flow into the safest haven in the world and that happens to the United States of America so whether one is a self-loathing American who believes that our country cannot move forward or whether they believe that we are no longer a world superpower the fact remains that we are and for the, for the, for the moment we shall remain the bastion of safety Chinese billionaires China being such a great superpower uh, all the all the uh, uh, hymns that are sung to the Chinese economic miracle yet when the Chinese billionaires want to basically run with their money the first thing they do is buy a 20 million dollar condo on West 57 New York City so that says it all the bottom line is that uh, getting back to the markets um, However, that's all interrelated because the inflow of global money, global capital, flows to where they find it to be safe. They park it in our U.S. government treasuries at a meager yield of 2.4%, or they come into the market and, uh, and, uh, and they basically place it in U.S. companies which are showing some very stable earnings growth and are starting to, and, and some of the finest and the most well-managed companies in the world. Saying all that, Dow Jones Industrial Average, waterfall decline that we saw here from the 17,100 plus level all the way to down to the 16,300 level I was hoping that we'd actually crash all the way down towards 16,000 but didn't happen on this round we found a very strong double bottom I call it triple bottom here um, as you can see and um, and we bounced uh, this bounce that we are undergoing right now the process is not finished yet couple of key things that I noticed number one if you notice here clearly you are starting to see the 30 this 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 broken um, 34 over uh, uh, which crashed down uh, with the 50 day moving average this I'm sorry this is being the hourly chart so 50 moving average uh, we are starting to see a minor crossover let me magnify that a bit and you can see that the 34 is now starting to cross over the 50 now what does it really mean it simply means that if it does cross over this hockey stick pattern that you're seeing we're gonna have a sharp move up where we're gonna reclaim back the 50 Fibonacci 50 percent retracement level um, in a hurry 
Now that's it. That's roughly about 180 points above this. So roughly about uh, 30 S&P points above where we are. The 30 S&P points above where we are would bring it up to 1963, uh, 19. Let's call it 19, somewhere between 1963 and 1975. If you listen to last night's video cast, and if you listen to some of the pundits talk about the resistance level on the market they talk about the 1965 level so it's not a coincidence that that also happens to be in relation to the Dow the 50% fib uh, fib Fibonacci retracement I will be covering the S&P 500 shortly on on the next video cast and you can see that that, that that's it that's an important level to monitor so um, that's where we are the other point to keep in mind if you're into pattern symmetry and such uh, I'm going to uh, pull my uh, little squiggly line here you have a inverted head and shoulder in play similar to the one that we had here this was the head this was the left shoulder this was a slightly higher right shoulder and uh, and you can clearly see you know what transpired after that I am not saying in any way or form and there's a lot of new members and uh, free trial subscribers who are listening to this that this is the way it's gonna happen I'm just simply showing you pattern symmetry which happens more often than not for a simple reason called behavioral game theory as human beings there are only two emotions that we deal with fear flight or flight correct fear or greed so the bottom line is our actions are dominated by that and that's exactly why market patterns can be analyzed in the context of human behavior after all it's the humans who program the algorithmic programs and the HFTs and human beings on their own who are trading the markets so here we have a head we have a left shoulder and we have a right shoulder so if this pattern continues then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna basically go over the neckline and we're going to basically head towards a 50-day moving average. We're going to find a lot of resistance here. This is a kind of a congested zone. You can see here, 50, 50 day moving average. And uh, this is also where, um, from this same level, um, the market failed. So I wouldn't be surprised, again, that we get up here and then we could have a waterfall decline, uh, which brings us down to, and this is exactly what happened here, which brought us down here after this was resolved okay we fell hard we created triple bottom now if we do have a quadruple bottom let's say I personally don't think it holds quadruple bottoms generally break down and at that point we will basically have to resort back to the daily chart and see where we can drop to which would be somewhere sub 16,000 so there's your roadmap um, is it that easy absolutely not I could be completely wrong but then I always claim I always remain clueless so so far my track record has been pretty good and uh, I'd like to keep it that way so that's what we're seeing a inverse head and shoulder pattern this is a 200 uh, 200 uh, uh, moving average on the hourly chart and if we get up here then that's 16,853 do I think that on this move up we're gonna reclaim back 17,000 my personal opinion says no so that is your chart for the Dow Jones Industrial Average on a short-term basis. While I have a minute or two left to cover this, let me look at the daily chart. Let me remove all the drawings and give a clean picture of what's going on. The clean picture, as you can see, we can draw a line all the way from November 2012. shown this many, many times. You guys are getting used to it now. You will see that uh, if you want to hold, uh, if you want to see that, we slip below this line this trend line we tested the 200 let's zoom in a little bit more and what do we see here we're basically resting look at this not a coincidence right we, we basically bounced off bounced off right here this upper trend line this trend line that goes all the way back to uh, to November 2012 so at this point we better hold these Bollinger's or else we're going to slip and test the lows again 16,332 and and if it slips below that we're going to come and test here which is the 16,000 level and that is almost a given so all scenarios are on the table uh, if we do start to move up um, then we're going to basically come and test the 16,740 right around this zone so that's pretty much the long and short of the story the internals are cooperating and upside move we do need this line to turn and uh, 
we need this line to turn and 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 the histograms to go into the green like this before we have this type of large move so we'll be monitoring it very closely thank you for listening